Let's go to Preston, who joins us now in Dallas, Texas. Preston, how can we help? Hey, how's it going, Ken? Thank you, uh, thank you all for having me this morning. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I'm a uh, a married guy with three kids. Uh, we got a good income of about 185, 190 thousand a year, uh, but it seems like we are hemorrhaging money through our miscellaneous uh, mm. budget item and our our uh, food item. Uh, you know, we've got one car loan. We've got about twelve thousand dollars left on that. I've got some medical debt. We had a a child this year, so we've got about $6,000 there. And then we've got uh, just some student loans left over uh, that amount to about $4,500, and then a mortgage that's about $200,000 left. Uh, So total debt is about $222,000. We make, you know, $185, $190, and it feels like at the end of the month we just have nothing left. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really just kind of wanted to get some insight on what should a family spend, uh, you know, monthly in a miscellaneous item, uh, maybe in, in the food budget, but we are just spending pretty much what we earn. And, you know, we've gone up in salaries over the last five years tremendously. We've doubled what we make, but we're still spending everything we make. Yep. And so I cannot figure out how to get over that hump. Yeah, it's that, it's the classic lifestyle creep, right? It's just a little bit here and there. And over time, that starts to become your norm. And then you just add a little bit more, add a little bit more, and then you look up and you're exactly, yeah, what you're saying. Um, President, are you guys doing a very detailed budget? Very detailed. Uh, I am in accounting, which okay. is kind of ironic, but I'm not good at accounting my own expen- expenses. Uh, but, you know, we we set a food budget of, let's say, 1500 to 2000 a month, and then you sit there and go, hey, we just spent $3,000 on food. Uh, and you sit there and go, how are we doing that? Well, uh, as as George would would like to not hear, we eat out all the dang time. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. I mean, we got a new baby. Yeah, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Let's just let's go out to eat. It's easier. I know. And, and we all know that, that we're going to spend way more there than we do eating at home. But yep. it's really just frustrating to be. Well, there's out. no. That's what's hard about this, Preston. Is with personal finance, we always say it's it's eighty percent behavior, it's twenty percent head knowledge. So you have the head knowledge of the numbers down with the budget of here's what we're going to do. But then you guys are not living on the plan that you've created. You're going over a thousand dollars in food. You're throwing, you know, a few hundred bucks here or there throughout the month on all this other stuff. Um, And so when you, when you realize that it's more of a discipline problem with you guys and the choices that you're making in everyday expenses, it is, it's, it's sucking the the life out of, out of y'all. What I would do, Preston, I would challenge you guys to say, um, and, and you know what, I, if you hold on the line, I'm going to give you uh, the premium version of every dollar because I think every dollar is one of the most helpful budgeting tools because it's going to be able to connect to your bank and you're going to be able to really be able to see in the way they do the paycheck planning and everything. It's just, it's a it's a really well, easy thing to see and your wife can have the same login. So you guys both have the app on your phone and I would practice Preston acting like you guys make 80 Okay. Act like you're ma- like you're making eighty grand, and do a budget off of that, and just see what see what happens. Say okay, we then that means we have to way cut back here. That means these you know eighteen subscriptions we're paying for we can't do that. Uh, that means maybe the kids that are doing the fun little gym classes every two days a week they're not going to do that anymore. Like you will have to cut back because I want you to take that eighty grand <laughs> or more quote unquote. I'm kind of just using a random number, but. And once you pay off the student loan, the car loan, I mean, all these loans that you guys have besides your mortgage, you guys could get this knocked out so quickly. And what I love about this, we always just call it gazelle intense because it is deep sacrifice. You are running like your hair's on fire and it's like, it is scorched earth. It's like, we're doing nothing. We're doing nothing and we're cutting back. And so that means maybe even cutting back more than 80. I was just saying as a fun mathematical game on the budget, just look to see what you would cut, start there and then I would trim back as as much as you guys can, Preston, because I want you guys to feel progress with your money. And it feels like you're spinning your wheels. You got all this debt hanging around. You're living still paycheck to paycheck. And there's been no progress. And so in order to get these wins, like there's some stuff in lifestyle that you will cut and it'll hurt. It will not be fun. And I know with a new baby, it's like you guys are all exhausted. I get it. But this is the time to do it, to buckle down and say it's now or never it's for a short period of time because then when all that's gone, Preston, I mean, how much is going out in payments 
for this debt per month besides your mortgage? Do you have that? How much is going out just to debt? I do. Uh, so for our medical debt, we actually, we've got a, uh, a high deductible insurance plan. So we've got an HSA that I've got that set up to, to wipe that out in the year uh, to where, you know, that doesn't hang around. So that's automatically off the top. And then we've got my wife's car loan uh, that we pay about 2500 a month on it. Holy uh, crap. So, I mean, what kind of car paying, is it? You're, you're taking some chunks at this. Whoa. Oh, oh well, you're paying extra. Not, you're paying extra. Oh, okay. Payment's only 500 bucks. Okay. 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 About 2500 Okay. Uh, but you sit there and go, I think we've got more in the budget. Uh, but you know, we just, once we get to the end of the month to, to make an extra payment, uh, it's not there and it's just super frustrating. Yeah. I mean, it's because you're living like you're making one ninety and spending everything. So, yeah, so let's, let's just look at this. What's your, what's the smallest debt that you have? Uh, that'd be the, the, uh, the student loans. Uh, you know, we've got three of them for the Sally Mae loans, but they total about 4,500 bucks. Okay, so instead of focusing on the twelve thousand dollar car loan, focus on the student loan. Yeah, and go ahead and just get that knocked so out. So, what's the payment? What's the minimum payment on the student loan right now? The three of them together, if they're well, all bunched. And that's the bad deal, is y'all know they're in forbearance, so we haven't even been paying on them. We've been just chunking at her her car loan, and I know that's not what baby step two is uh, for that gazelle intensity. Well, okay, we said, hey, here's uh, the point I'm trying to make. Joe's gonna, if you stay with this, if you stay with this. And you work this plan. You guys cut. First of all, you need to stop eating out. Like no more. Like you guys got to stop. You got to eat turkey everybody sandwiches at night. Get like, do eggs and bacon for dinner. I mean, like you can yeah. do cheap meals right it, for a season. It's not yeah. forever. You're a you're an accountant. Your issue is not the numbers. The issue is the behavior. And if you guys try it for one month and go, you know what? We're all in. We're not going to eat out one time at all, just to see how much money you can save extra. And the point is, we knock out the student loans. Then we knock out the car payment, and all of a sudden you've got more margin than you realize. Here's the I know you're discouraged, but you've got more margin in that budget than you realize. But you've got to change your spending habits. And if you do that, and if, if we can get some extra income, we sell some stuff in this debt snowball, whatever we got, we can find margin pretty quickly. As, as detailed as you are, grasping the numbers, you and your wife have got to sit down and go, if we do this, and then we do this, and we do this like crazy for the next 6, 12 months, here's how much progress we'll make. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, this is doable. I think you're just discouraged yeah. right now. And Preston, with, with the, I'll add on that for Ken because this is always helpful for me. Whenever we're doing a big goal, so whether for you it's getting out of debt or you know it's saving up for something, look at the time frame. Run the numbers like what we're saying and just know and say, okay, we are confident. You know, It's July right now, so we are confident, you know, by dang Christmas, we're gonna be we're gonna do it from now till Christmas. Yeah. It's just it's go time. I mean, or whatever the the date is, but have that date because that gives you the the light at the end of the tunnel that you're not gonna like live in this world forever and ever. Amen. You can actually enjoy what you're working, but you're not enjoying your money now because again, I think so much of it is this debt, and so much of it is that lifestyle. Because once you guys pay this off, do you have any savings at all, Preston? Do you guys have cash in the bank? Yeah, we have some, but not enough to, to cover any of it. How much? We've got our emergency fund, just the starter emergency fund. Okay, so you got $1,000. That's where you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you yeah. sell your wife's car? We get, we're running out of time, but I mean, you got to look at everything, man. Selling cars, everything, you know? You got to reduce mm -hmm. your monthly payments and increase your income. So for you, my friend, I know you're an accountant, but there's a lot of gig work right now for accountants. I'd be working 60, 80 hours a week doing accounting work because you can get paid very well for freelance work. Income goes up, expenses go down. You guys can access talk quick. Like get after it. And then yeah. you'll see some breathing room and then yes. you realize, okay, we can stay the course.